ladies and gentlemen, uh, a very warm welcome to all of you and welcome to uh, today's panel, which is entitled uh, Securing the Digital Transformation of the Western Balkans. Uh, my name is Thomas Gerber. I'm the director of uh, DCAF, which is a uh, Geneva-based uh, international foundation with a mandate to uh, contribute to increased uh, security of states as well as uh, their people uh, through security sector reform, always based on the rule of law, good governance and uh, uh, respect for uh, human rights. So we're an, an organization with operations in uh, currently 74 countries, but we've always put a particular emphasis on the Western Balkans. We've uh, you know, supported partner countries in the Western Balkans for almost uh, 20 years. And in the context of that work, we've always tried to, of course, uh, respond to new challenges relating to the security sector. So uh, I'm very pleased uh, to be able to moderate today's panel, which addresses one of these issues, the new challenges, uh, which uh, have high relevance for, for, uh, for the security uh, sector. And uh, you know, of course, we all know since uh, the countries, uh, as well as the EU, agreed on the digital agenda for the Western Balkans. Uh, uh, you know, uh, high uh, ambition, ambitions and uh, you know, a high, very ambitious agenda has been set to advance digitalization in, in these countries. Uh, uh, a process which holds tremendous economic uh, uh, you know, promises, uh, but it also comes with a few, uh, obviously, challenges and, 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 and hurdles to overcome. Uh, some of them uh, related to uh, accountability, uh, the role of public services uh, in the process, uh, which essentially is driven, of course, by, by, by uh, the private, uh, private uh, industry. Uh, <coughs> so if uh, cybersecurity related uh, uh, challenges, and that's uh, you know, essentially uh, uh, what I was alluding to, is not addressed uh, uh, properly, then incidents can occur, which can cause uh, huge uh, economic uh, uh, damage also. Uh, often in the orders of uh, orders of hundreds uh, of thousands of uh, uh, billions of, of euro, and the consequences can not only be financial or uh, monetary, also it can have a very negative impact on uh, the trust people develop for this uh, digitalization process uh, uh, more more broadly. So uh, when we talk about when we will be talking about. Uh, challenges relating to the implementation of the digital agenda. It should not only be uh, about uh, decreasing uh, roaming costs uh, or improving possibility of, of, of access to, to, to digital networks, but it should, it should al also be about uh, you know, how we can uh, mitigate risks uh, relating to uh, uh, <coughs> you know, cybersecurity or, or the reality in the cyberspace. <coughs> we will, uh, on this panel, focus primarily on two countries in the region. On, uh, it's the two countries where we as an organization, TCAF, uh, have also been able to accumulate some experience. It's going to be, it's going to be Serbia <coughs> as well as uh, uh, Montenegro. And we will try to discuss with our panelists you know, what uh, uh, the government, uh, together with the private sector, have done to, to address uh, some, of these, uh, some of these challenges. Let me briefly uh, uh, introduce uh, the panelists. I think we uh, are very grateful that we can uh, you know, count on a huge amount of uh, experience and uh, expertise represented on today's uh, panel. So let me first of all introduce uh, Mrs. Tatiana Matic, uh, who is the uh, State Secretary uh, of the Ministry of Trade and Tourism and Telecommunications uh, uh, of the Republic of Serbia. Uh, she uh, also is the President of the negotiation, Negotiating Group in Serbia's EU accession process for Chapters uh, 3 and uh, 10. Uh, uh, which deal with the right of establishment and freedom to provide services and information, uh, society and media. So she's uh, you know, really very intimately uh, familiar with uh, some of those uh, challenges. And uh, since uh, January uh, 2016, she has also been a member of uh, the European Digital Single Market Strat Strategic Group, uh, uh, on top of uh, being uh, the head of the body for coordinating activities in information society. Uh, within within the Serbian government, so very welcome, very welcome uh, to you, <coughs> State Secretary. Uh, secondly, uh, let me also welcome uh, to my to my right, uh, Mr. Dejan uh, Abazovic, who is the State Secretary uh, at the Ministry of Public Administration of Montenegro. Uh, he uh, comes with a more technical, uh, uh, professional background. He is, uh, you know, as we 
uh, discussed yesterday over dinner, uh, originally an engineer. Uh, so he understands all the technical intricacies uh, related to the topic. Uh, 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 but uh, he then uh, you know, found his way into uh, where he currently is, which is uh, the Ministry of, uh, of Public Administration. Uh, uh, previously, uh, he, uh, from 2009 to 2011, he was uh, uh, also an advisor to the Minister for Development of the Information Society uh, uh, at the Ministry for Information Society and Telecommunications. So also a very broad, very broad uh, background. And then thirdly, but certainly not lastly, the voice of the private sector on the panel, uh, Mrs. Natasha uh, uh, Sekulic, uh, who is currently the IPM country leader for Serbia, Montenegro, Macedonia and Albania. Uh, uh, but previously, I mean, she has a, you know, an experience, a regional experience, which goes a very long way back. Uh, so previously, uh, 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 Mrs. Uh, Sikulic was uh, the chief operating officer for Southeastern Europe and Romania at IBM, uh, and also the executive assistant to general manager, the general manager for Central and uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, for a number of years, she was part of the business partner organization. Uh, which uh, has played an important role in this uh, uh, area, uh, you know, topical area. Uh, at first she was responsible for Serbia, Montenegro, Macedonia and Albania within that group and later for the whole, for the whole region. Uh, she's also one of the founders uh, and the president of the e-government alliance in Serbia's uh, NALED, which is the National Alliance for Local Economic Development. So uh, very welcome to the, to, the, to, to, to the panelists. Before I start asking uh, the first round of questions to the panelists, uh, we would also like to associate uh, uh, the other important uh, partner in this whole conversation about the digital agenda, which is of course uh, the, the European Union. And uh, originally we discussed with uh, Commissioner Gabriel, who is the Commissioner for Digital Economy and Society within the European Commission. Uh, uh, you know, we invited her to be, uh, to, to be part of this panel. She unfortunately could not uh, make it, but she expressed uh, a very, very strong interest for the topic and uh, 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 has asked uh, Ambassador Fabriti, who is the head of the EU delegation here in Belgrade, to pass on uh, her message uh, to, to you and, uh, and I guess also to the panel. Uh, and I would like to uh, invite uh, Ambassador Fabriti to address us first and then uh, we, we uh, start the discussion among the panelists. Please, Ambassador. Good morning, everybody. It's a, it's a, it's a pleasure to, to be with you, State Secretary uh, Matic, uh, State Secretary Bazovic, and uh, Natasha, Ambassadors. Uh, certainly, the, the Commissioner would have, uh, would have preferred to deliver uh, her remarks uh, uh, um, Personally, but uh, travel agenda and, and, and a busy, busy schedule uh, prevented her to do so. So she called me and asked me to, to do it with a, with a, and I will do it with a, a great pleasure as uh, digital agenda is uh, an essential part of the work of the AU here in, uh, in, uh, uh, in the region. Uh, maybe, as the uh, as ambassador said, uh, uh, a little bit give me the role of uh, give uh, in a broader broader view of what the AU is doing on digital, and especially here in uh, uh, in the region. The Commissioner Gabriel was uh, here in, uh, in in Belgrade only three weeks ago for a number of important meeting with the uh, with the Serbian uh, uh, counterpart, starting with the with the, with the Prime Minister. In, uh, in the past months, in February exactly, we passed the EU uh, launch uh, and uh, uh, presented a commu uh, communication was, whose title was uh, a credible enlargement perspective for an enhanced EU engagement in the Western Balkans. In this strategy, this uh, enlargement perspective, there's also a digital component. And is, uh, with, through this uh, communication, uh, it was a strong policy signal by the EU side to uh, uh, spirit of partnership, uh, spirit of ownership to work with the Western Balkan uh, uh, region. And certainly in, the, in, the, in this element, uh, uh, the digital is, uh, is, an integral, uh, is an integral part. Uh, in, in Sofia, in the, in the summit in, uh, in April, uh, if you have time to go through, there's been a number of initiatives called flagship initiative. I see the state secretary nodding, excellent. One of this is the digital agenda. It's uh, one of the six areas where the 
uh, EU and the Western Balkan partner had decided to work uh, together uh, is exactly the digital. Digital uh, for us, uh, for all of us, means uh, modernization of uh, public administration, a stronger uh, cyber security, increased connectivity, and of course, uh, and, uh, and in, uh, an improved business climate in, uh, in, uh, in the region. I see IBM nodding. So the Commission and the Western Balkan partners uh, have agreed on a number of, uh, of key objectives. The first one is we need to invest uh, in infrastructure. So broadband uh, uh, connectivity is essential. Uh, the EU put uh, up front uh, 30 million, uh, uh, 30 million uh, euro in grants uh, through the Western uh, Balkan investment uh, framework uh, to support uh, the uh, rolling up, rolling out of the broadband uh, uh, infrastructure. So it is important that the partners in the region, we have two here today, Serbia and Montenegro, uh, among the others, will uh, identify a specific uh, project uh, to work uh, with this, uh, with this envelope, financial envelope uh, put forward by the Commission. The second one uh, area, so infrastructure one, the second is to increase uh, cyber, sec cyber security and, and trust. I think we have a common interest uh, to improve uh, the online security and uh, digital uh, trust. The number of uh, cyber incidents, I presume, will be part of your conversation today. Uh, both in, so these incidents, both in terms of uh, uh, geographical spread, but also in terms of variety of sectors involved, uh, shows, uh, if any, any, uh, any doubt, that uh, uh, no country can challenge uh, these issues uh, alone. So there's a need of... Uh, a strong cooperation. Uh, the Commission has announced a communication, which is for us is a policy paper, uh, to build a, a stronger uh, cyber security for the, for the EU, uh, for the European Union, and uh, that will contain a number of measures uh, to increase uh, our resilience and response to cyber attack. Uh, but the challenge, as I said at the beginning, is common within the EU and, and outside. So certainly there is an interest on both of, on both of us to, to work stronger, uh, to cooperate in, finding, uh, in, in fighting cyber attacks, building bridges between, uh, within us uh, to create an, uh, a common space of resilience. In this sense, uh, the Commission is uh, ready to support uh, the establishment of uh, national cybersecurity strategy and computer security incident response teams known as uh, C. CSIRTs. They will uh, cooperate with the European uh, networks and will connect uh, cyber capacity at the EU level. And they also, uh, this system will also link to cooperative mechanisms for coordinated response in case of cyber incident and crisis that enhance cyber security capabilities. Normally, each country has uh, a robust uh, cyber security strategy, but we are uh, pulling up and put this uh, uh, cyber uh, response at the EU level, and this will be coordinated through the Network and Information Security Directive, NIS. And uh, the Commission is ready to support uh, the partners in the region uh, in their efforts to align their own uh, cyber security policy with the EU policy and the NIS uh, um, directive to ensure rapid, concrete results for citizens and business uh, alike. The third element, so infrastructure, cyber, the third is uh, strengthening the digital uh, economy and, and society. Uh, this one is another where the, area where the Commission is particularly keen. You know, the, uh, the European Union Code Week is an initiative that we, that we run, is very, is very important. Uh, but apart from this, in addition to this, uh, our digital agenda is support deployment of e government, e procurement, e health services. Uh, to help increase digital skills among uh, uh, citizens. The fourth uh, is to boost research and uh, innovation. So digital agenda will uh, support uh, national research facilities and connect uh, uh, these facilities with uh, the digital European research area. This is very important, it's critical. We can uh, bring, uh, bring to the table world-class uh, training for research and engineer, engineer promote cooperation, uh, and also it's important that our cooperation have a uh, translating support uh, uh, to innovation and digital entrepreneurship. The Western Balkan partners are already invited to participate at the next Startup Summit 
in Sofia, will be on 15 of November, and the leaders of the startup organization will be invited to sign a joint declaration and establish a network to support enhanced cooperation. Last but not least, complementary to this four objective that I mentioned, there is a question which has been already anticipated, the question of roaming. Um, is, is it clear that it's uh, having the ability to use your uh, mobile when you cross uh, any border, uh, it's uh, a pressing necessity, but also is in a way to increase, uh, 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 give another boost to exchanges uh, which is beneficial for uh, citizens and business. And in this area, the uh, Commission is very much uh, appreciate the fact that uh, six uh, Western Balkan uh, partners uh, have decided to update uh, their own uh, regional uh, roaming agreement that will soon hopefully cover all the consumer in this uh, uh, region. The time frame and the schedule is very uh, ambitious. The first update, uh, the regional uh, uh, roaming agreement will, be, will enable regulators to agree on a text by a time of the plenary meeting of the body of the European Regulators for Electronic Communication in Prague already on December the 6th. Following that, the line minister from the six partners will be able to sign the agreement at the digital summit that uh, Serbia will host in the first half of April 2019. So this is an, a strong political signal, signal from the Commission to make uh, further progress in reducing Roman tariff between the EU and the Western Balkans. Let me conclude that say that the Com European Commission, particularly Commissioner uh, Gabriel, but also here in Serbia, my delegation and myself, we are uh, ready to help and uh, remain uh, in, in your disposal for uh, uh, further contact for work. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, in this Western Balkan strategy, the future is also digital. We, we want to, to see this uh, uh, digital agenda in this broader perspective. I wish you uh, uh, a great success for this panel and I look forward to hear from you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador, for, uh, uh, for, for, for these uh, 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 important points and for uh, <coughs> bringing back to us the five clusters uh, you know, which are at the centre uh, of uh, the agenda. Uh, thank you also for, uh, for conveying to us the strong commitment uh, of the Commission to uh, to, to push this agenda f forward, uh, uh, following a very, uh, you know, a very ambitious uh, calendar also. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, thank you also uh, for your uh, engagement in, 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 in interacting also with the national representatives here. And let me now uh, focus on uh, uh, the national context. And, and, and uh, in doing that, uh, I would first like to, to turn to you, State Secretary Matic, because Serbia has obviously, uh, you know, already invested uh, a lot into uh, uh, this partnership and into pushing the agenda forward, forward in Serbia, I, you know, in terms of developing the IT industry uh, uh, and all other partners involved in digitalization uh, more generally. If you could maybe uh, outline uh, for us quickly uh, where uh, you currently are in this process and where you, uh, where you uh, would identify the most uh, important challenges, uh, you know, going forward. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank to, to His Excellency Ambassador uh, for uh, this uh, brief uh, introducing us with the uh, European digital agenda, especially for the Western Balkans countries. I have to say that uh, Serbia uh, is on the right path right now and uh, or our goals are in fact in line with the European agenda for the Western Balkans countries. Our priorities are all, almost the same uh, or maybe uh, I should say are the same but maybe just not, uh, we don't have maybe just uh, the, the line is not uh, the same. Uh, maybe for the, uh, the, first, uh, the first place for us right now is uh, <coughs> Uh, it's trying to strengthen our IT industry. Uh, the second one would be trying to develop, uh, first of all, the digital skills through the educational system and empowering the digital transformation of the schools. Uh, then on the third place would be uh, investing in infrastructure, not only uh, uh, having in mind the broadband, which is 
something that uh, the Ministry for Telecommunication is uh, fighting for very strongly and hoping that in the next year uh, from the budget we will have more uh, sources to uh, invest in this field which uh, needs a, a lot of investment. Uh, and on the fourth, uh, it would be, of course, the cybersecurity and uh, at last but not least the digital economy. So uh, I would say that these are uh, the priority, the almost, not almost, but the same as the digital agenda for the Western Balkans, but maybe we are just doing it in some other, let's say, uh, let's say phases. Uh, yesterday we had a uh, uh, meeting of the National uh, Council for uh, Investment uh, and uh, Innovative Entrepreneurship uh, and uh, the, the leading of this uh, council is the Prime Minister. So we had one uh, very fruitful discussion regarding our plans for the next year. And what is for sure to say now is, is that Serbia will uh, invest much more in infrastructure and in digital transformations of schools and in digital economy. Um, uh, I would also like to say that uh, the main goal of the government is to uh, achieve this digital transformation. It's not easy to do. Uh, the main partners uh, on uh, this, uh, uh, let's say, challenging uh, journey uh, are the Ministry of Telecommunication, uh, also the uh, Office for IT, which is led directly by the Prime Minister, and of course uh, all the other uh, ministries uh, which are uh, involved on the side, like the Ministry of Education or Ministry of Health, Ministry of Local uh, uh, Self-Government. Uh, so there are a lot of partners uh, in this and we are all involved in a specific way uh, regarding our all, uh, own authorities. But uh, what is the most important uh, is that uh, this government and the government before, uh, led by the, uh, uh, Mr. Vucic, who is now the president, uh, gave this really full support to the project of digital transformation. And I think that uh, this was really uh, crucial for uh, understanding that this is the most important agenda that we have right now. Uh, this agenda is important for our also regional cooperation, which we believe that uh, is uh, crucial for uh, entering the European Union. Without this kind of uh, regional cooperation through digital, which is for us, we believe maybe the easiest way to achieve some progress in our regional cooperation would be through the digital, and this is the only way to uh, go further and uh, together uh, become the members of the European Union. Uh, Serbia has done a lot in all of these fields. Uh, I have to say when we speak uh, uh, about the legal framework, some things we have done even before the European Union. Um, His Excellency uh, mentioned uh, NIS, uh, um, dire NIS uh, uh, directive. I have to say uh, that before the European Union had this directive, uh, we have adopted our law on cybersecurity in 2016. So some things we have done uh, even before, completely in line with the European legal framework uh, directive, etc. But of course, when you are asking me for the challenges, the main challenges uh, still is the implementation of m many of these laws, which are completely in line with the European Union, uh, the law on cybersecurity, uh, the law uh, on electronic communication, especially the new one, uh, which we all uh, hope that will be soon in the Parliament. Um, this, uh, the law on electronic document identification, which of course uh, will help uh, uh, to have uh, the digital economy in the right way that we believe uh, it can be, that 
and also this implementing of this law will help us uh, to uh, have more services uh, and more efficient e-government, e-health and all other kind of services uh, that the government uh, need uh, and uh, for to provide for the citizens. So the main challenge is in fact the implementation, our legal framework is good and regarding the infrastructure, especially for broadband, the main <coughs> challenge is the uh, finding uh, budget or, and sources for this kind of money I have uh, for this kind of investment because uh, we are speaking uh, about a huge amounts uh, of uh, investment in the field of broadband. Uh, I will just say that all the countries, uh, all our neighbors who are already in the European Union, in fact. Uh, achieved uh, significant success in uh, building this broadband infrastructure when they entered the European Union and when they became able to uh, have these sources. But we already have a conversation with EBRD, with uh, also European Investment Bank, uh, uh, you mentioned uh, Commissioner Gabriel and uh, the Western Balkans Fund that exists, which is for uh, these uh, six economies, uh, uh, let's say, not, not such a huge amount to develop uh, some uh, big, uh, yes, but for technical assistance, it can be helpful for, for all of us. Uh, our goal as Serbia is to uh, find money in a budget to uh, uh, invest in uh, broadband infrastructure so that we could, together with our European partners like EBRD or ABE, uh, participate together and then maybe open some door to <coughs> some uh, bigger uh, uh, funds that can really help us build uh, this uh, infrastructure because we think that this is crucial for developing of all of these uh, topics that we have mentioned. Uh, digital economy, cyber security, uh, also uh, educational transformation. You cannot do anything uh, on the long run if you don't have this infrastructure uh, developed enough. So this is for the beginning. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, State Secretary, for uh, uh, you know, explaining to us where, we, where you are in implementing uh, what you called the most important agenda for Serbia uh, at the moment. And I think we we could see that there is a huge amount of uh, convergence and alignment in terms of you know the elements within your uh, within your uh, national uh, efforts uh, alignment with uh, what uh, you know ambassador fabrizi has just outlined as the main clusters uh, uh, you know of priority uh, on on the eu's uh, side and uh, of course investment uh, uh, will play an important role uh, you know interesting to hear that you have will be able to release some investments into uh, certain areas, but that will continue to be, of course, a, a challenge to, 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 to finance uh, the whole agenda. And then you, uh, you know, indicated a few, uh, a few of the challenges. You, you highlighted a few of the legislative challenges, you know, in implementing some of the directives into national legislation. Uh, maybe we can uh, come back to, to that uh, 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 at the later stage in, in the discussion. But, but thank you very much for, for now. Uh, 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 let me now turn to uh, uh, State Secretary uh, Abazovic and, and Montenegro, uh, which uh, has always also made significant steps, uh, uh, you know, in the same direction. I think it would be interesting for the audience to hear whether you, uh, uh, you know, have a similar, uh, uh, you know, a similar story to tell in terms of where Montenegro is currently. Yes. First of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here with you, and uh, really, I have to say that is uh, I'm very pleased and. Uh, this is very uh, honored for me to be on this e event and uh, to share uh, um, everything what we're doing uh, in the process of the dig digitalization and digital transformation uh, with you. Uh, also, I have to congratulate the organizer for this uh, event. Uh, this is really amazing how it's organized. Uh, I can <laughs> I can say a lot about it and uh, uh, some of some of uh, things uh, what is mentioned by the Miss uh, Matic I can uh, just repeat but I don't want to do that because uh, we uh, also doing uh, uh, a lot uh, when we talking about digital agenda for the Western Balkan uh, last week uh, we 
we've been visited by the uh, Commissar Gabriel and we talk a lot about uh, it with her in Podgorica and uh, uh, the uh, story was uh, about everything what Mr. Ambassador mentioned here it is about cyber security, about digital skills, about uh, the broadband, about the roaming, about the everything what we're doing now and uh, we ag agree about what we did, what we're doing now and what we have uh, to do about it and uh, it's not uh, 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 just a small <laughs> uh, process of acti activity or amount of activity but uh, uh, also uh, I'm, I'm sure that we are on the right way and that, uh, that, that we will be in situation very soon to, to say that we have a concrete result. And as you said, uh, when you announced me, uh, <laughs> I'm recognized as an engineer and uh, I'm doing uh, very concrete things. I'm not a politician, I'm uh, a man who uh, is produce, producing things and making things uh, visible. Uh, that's why I'm approaching to this uh, obligation on the same way. And uh, uh, first, what, what I have to say that the government of Montenegro in the April or May in this year uh, established this position, which I'm covering now, position of the State Secretary for the uh, IT and uh, who is who in charge for the development of the electronic government and information society. And it is, I think, very important. Why they did it? Because uh, they, uh, uh, they said we are not uh, satisfied how uh, we are not satisfied with the speed of, of change, how the, the process of digital transformation and digitalization is uh, Montenegro going. We think it can be much, much faster, and that's why we have to do something to try it. Uh, and uh, we start to work, and uh, immediately we said that uh, we need to uh, do uh, and to approach to, the, to that process uh, more agile, more uh, quicker, and uh, to do things uh, as it usually has to be said, uh, uh, to implement one method which is called two-speed IT. And we acting now like that. So we recognized uh, everything what we need to do. We uh, recognize where we are now. We recognize our position. We, we recognize what, what we want. Some of of that is written in digital agenda for the EU uh, and uh, the other things are recognized in digital ad, uh, agenda for the Western Balkan 6 and we said yes we know where we are we know where, uh, where we want to go we just need to find the road on which we will approach and achieve the goals which we uh, said that we have to achieve and we start to work uh, that approach is uh, I have to say a very serious approach and one uh, holistic approach and that's why I think this year in Montenegro is a very important year. Some, somehow this year uh, announcing something what is, uh, I can say, uh, 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 starting to be uh, in the process of the uh, uh, fourth industrial revolution or starting the process uh, of the digitalization, uh, the digitalization of everything. And that process, what I think uh, it's most important, that that process has to be started uh, from ourselves. Every, every one of us has to change uh, 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 own mind and to accept that we're living in the world which is changing uh, so quickly with uh, so uh, uh, frequently technological change that is not anymore uh, uh, to be the, uh, the, the, the part of our uh, usual uh, 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 skills which we have, uh, which we implementing in our everyday work on the way like it was before. And uh, it is one of the most important things that we need to change ourselves, we need to change uh, uh, collective mind, 
in the state bodies, we need to change the, 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 the minds in the IT sector, they, they attitude about, uh, about their approach, how they're doing things, and after that we can uh, talk about implementation of the new uh, things. I will, I, I, I can't say a lot about what we did when we're talking about uh, the some of these things what I mentioned before. Uh, as example, I will say that in uh, electronic communication and the acquisition of the Spectre in the last two years uh, are invested more, more than 200 million in Montenegro. Uh, every uh, three of four households in Montenegro have fixed internet. One of uh, uh, three households which fixed the internet has uh, internet with uh, uh, more than 30 megabits per second. 99% uh, uh, of the uh, population in Montenegro is covered by the mobile uh, signal. 97% of the uh, population in Montenegro is covered by UTMS and LTE. And, uh, but uh, uh, it is not uh, the goal of uh, what I want to say. I want to say that we really need to accept the, di the digital transformation on the right way. And uh, when we're talking about uh, digital transformation, in, in my opinion, technology is uh, uh, at the end of the story. First, we need to prepare ourselves. First, we need to change ourselves and to be, and to be uh, prepared for that. I mentioned the, that uh, our approach is some, somehow a holistic approach about everything of that. Uh, uh, in the middle of this year, we said, OK, uh, what we need to do and what uh, and which activities we need to uh, do uh, in next few years to, <coughs> to change everything and to prepare ourselves for the uh, fourth industrial revolution for the uh, global world for the uh, digital world and we recognize first that it has to be uh, uh, done on, on a four level First level is our ministry. And every ministry has to do a lot inside the ministry, all the organization unit, all the, all the uh, one state body. The second level is uh, the level of state bodies, the level of the government. What we need to do between the state bodies and how we, can, uh, how we will improve that process, process of coordination uh, because uh, there is no information society, there is no electronic government which depends only on one uh, state body. Third level is level of the country. What we need and what uh, we have uh, to do uh, to, uh, to, to get the information or digital society on the level which we want and where we want to be in, as example, to, uh, 2020. And fourth level is level of yeah, European Union. If we, if we have that four level, then we need to recognize which activities we need to realize on, on that four levels. And we said, OK, first activity is activity about uh, uh, legis uh, leg legislative. Which legislative on all of these four levels we need to do? Second activity is organization, also on that four level. After that, we need to do something about human resources, about infrastructure, about services, etc. As example, at the end, what we need to do about the promotion. Uh, I'm sure in Montenegro, as example, uh, very small or, or uh, very small uh, number of people know that we, that we, ha that we have more the, than 500 electronic services on our uh, electronic uh, on, 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 on our e-portal. That's why we need also activity about the promotion. And we start with that activity, activity see, on all of these uh, four levels. I will just mention some, some of them uh, because we have very good uh, 
legislative infrastructure aligned with the EU. I will just say that we have a law of electronic communication which is aligned with EU, that we have a law of electronic identification, electronic signature, which is followed by the 10 uh, acts which are uh, together uh, making one legislative <coughs> for the digital identification and digital signing. We start to work in a new law about electronic garment and it is the most important when we're talking about legislative. We said the old one is not uh, uh, anymore uh, uh, legislative which can help us to develop the, everything what we want and we start to uh, uh, working on the new law and all, uh, I have to say that we prepared the draft version. It will be a very origi original uh, law uh, which is prepared uh, for the Montenegro and uh, uh, which will take all of our comparative uh, advantages uh, for the uh, possibility to do the things much more faster. Also, we uh, uh, organize a lot of other of things and services. We, uh, as example, when, when we're talking about uh, uh, services, when we're talking about basic pro projects, we said we want uh, every citizen to, uh, to have digital identification and to, to be in situa situation to digitally sign uh, something. How can we do it? We made one project with name of national identification document. And that in the national identification document will be unique uh, electronic card uh, uh, on which will be the personal card, will be the health card, will be the social card, will be the driving card, will be the traveling uh, document, will be the student card. Also with, with that document you will be in situation to, uh, to, pick, uh, to, 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 to pay everything if you want or something like that. And we prepared that document and, we, or, and that project and the government and the government already adapted that document and I hope that we will, uh, in very beginning of the new year, we start to, with the implementation of that project. But that project needs to be followed by the other things. We need to develop national identification schema. We need to organize national system for the electronic identification. Also, we need to organize uh, our electronic s uh, services on, uh, how can I say, on uh, some, uh, in, in some way like uh, federalization of the, of the services, where we will just recognize uh, some common uh, services which will be used from, from everybody else. And that's, that services we already start uh, to, to preparing and some of them are, uh, for some of them the contract is signed, some of them are uh, now in the public uh, procurement process, uh, some of them will be uh, started until the new year. Also, I just have to say that we talk with uh, Commissioner, Co Commissioner Gabriel uh, about needs to uh, 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 realize something to to to, uh, to establish some kind uh, of the uh, project, any project which will be between uh, the, the the country in the region, and we need to do that until the uh, new summit uh, in April next year in Belgrade. And we, and we will try to talk with, with our uh, neighbors, with our friends, and uh, I'm sure that we will uh, find something what will be the project which will uh, cross the border uh, in digital way. Well, thank you very much, uh, State Secretary, for, uh, for this very uh, comprehensive, but also uh, optimistic uh, outline. And, you know, and I say optimistic because uh, uh, yesterday, again, over dinner, uh, State Secretary informed me that you know, to, 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 to accompany this whole agenda forward, uh, you know, his ministry has a workforce of roughly 
40 colleagues who, who support the State Secretary in, in this whole endeavour, which is uh, really quite, quite impressive. And, and, and I think it's important to note that Montenegro, uh, you know, already has a very uh, solid, uh, you know, has achieved a solid level of digitalization. Uh, 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 and you, you've indicated a few, a, few, a, few, a few statistical information, you know, how much that agenda has already taken uh, uh, root in, in, in the country. And uh, uh, I think it's also important to bear in mind that uh, technology is, is only one side of the coin, but uh, attitudes, uh, uh, you know, should precede uh, uh, technological uh, development and should be informed, uh, you know, attitudinal change and uh, preparedness should be uh, inf should should, uh, should, uh, should inform technological uh, uh, progress uh, progress as well. And you, you, one important point I believe, and we may want to get back to it, is you know you indicated the four layers of uh, of, uh, of actors involved. You know, your ministry and then the interministerial uh, structure. Uh, uh, the linkage to other stakeholders within society, and then fourthly, the EU. And so, uh, you know, it links to what uh, already State Secretary Matic uh, indicated when she talked about some certain partnership governance arrangements, uh, you know, uh, to make sure that all the stakeholders are on board. Uh, I think that's very important uh, if the process uh, has, to, has to be sustainable. Uh, uh, so thank you very much for this first, uh, first uh, overview. Uh, 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 which uh, uh, you know allows us now to turn to uh, Mrs. Uh, Sekulic, our uh, 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 third speaker, uh, who will have a slightly different perspective, of course, uh, and hopefully also you know a perspective which will allow us to uh, you know uh, 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 you know include some more critical uh, uh, analysis in the conversation, uh, given that uh, you know the private sector, of course, is uh, uh, a hugely important player, given that it. Uh, uh, is in control of uh, most of the internet infrastructure uh, and that it drives forward you know uh, this process uh, very forcefully so if you may be mr uh, mrs uh, sekulic if you uh, look at what has happened in uh, in the two countries but you can maybe also bring other country examples into uh, into the conversation uh, that you're familiar with if you if you look at progress and uh, uh, you know uh, you know, how would you assess uh, where we currently are? Uh, you know, how would you assess the progress? Uh, uh, how has it affected the business community? You know, all these measures which uh, which Serbia and Montenegro ha have already taken, and uh, uh, you know, where would you see uh, the most important uh, gaps still? You know, what what would be your suggestions to our two other panelists? Uh, where should they put uh, you know higher priority uh, going forward? Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting um, and um, good morning to everybody. Um, you used the word criticism. I would like to say constructive criticism. Okay. And, um, and coming from business, um, the business is super impatient, always. <coughs> okay. And um, <coughs> Mr. Abazovic said something about um, the speed. Um, yes, it's always too slow for us. But allow me to put uh, into perspective, uh, as, um, as you said in the opening um, lines, um, I was, uh, IBM was one of the founders of the e-government alliance uh, within Nalid platform. And um, I was a president for two years. Um, I passed the presidency to somebody else to prove that it's institutional um, uh, knowledge there now. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, and I had a, an opportunity to talk with the executive office of NALED and to talk with very smart people that I met along the way from the government, from the public and private sector. And when we were discussing about the progress that has been made in the last two years, I'm talking about Serbia, and when business comes and says, but this is too slow. And if, if the colleagues from the executive office of NALED tells me, but it's the speed of light, what is happening compared to what has happened previously, one has to put a certain medial um, um, agreement. Yeah, it's it's not that slow as as business things. Obviously, it's not super uh, fast as government uh, things. Uh, but a lot of good things have happened in this area, uh, especially when I talk in Serbia. As uh, Serbia was very active on this one, from the legislative and regulatory perspective, and. Um, as, as, as you, Tanya, um, you right, rightfully said, it's, it's now about implementation of it. 
it is the implementation and um, what do we need from systematical operational uh, change management, the attitude perspective that we basically implemented wider. Um, you asked me about to compare uh, the level of um, digital transformation, as we like to say it, uh, along the countries. It is very, um, it differs. Uh, the fact is, what we see is that it is on the, it is articulative from each and every country that, uh, that we are responsible in the region. Um, but what we have observed is that, um, and this is not only within the government sector, the lack of skills, it's also within the business sector. Because all of these new technologies and whatever is happening within the digital transformation, you need to have a certain level of skills. Uh, and skills not as only the tax savvy, we're not talking about the tax savvy, but we, we are talking about the complete holistical um, skill approach, meaning that the person who knows how to code, okay, is able to articulate it to another member who doesn't know how to code, huh? but is the owner of the business process. Um, and um, the, good, the good thing that I see, uh, that I saw from these two years uh, being the president of uh, EE Government Alliance uh, um, in Aled is that I've seen that the government is willing to engage in a constructive dialogue with the private sector. And that the government is willing to uh, um, receive some um, ideas um, to get into the organized approach to get the capacity building, right, to enter education level. Uh, and I applaud to that. I haven't seen that before. Uh, or I was not um, involved in these kind of activities before. Okay? And I would um, encourage that we continue doing so. Um, as I said, I met a number of uh, smart, enthusiastic um, people within the government, within WEBS, the Naled, um, the other platforms uh, that are more than willing um, to help jointly as a public-private engagement to uh, achieve step by step the digital transformation. Well, thank you very much uh, for this uh, truly uh, you know, constructive uh, piece of feedback also and of uh, the attempt to, to put uh, some of the previous points into perspective. Uh, the fact that uh, you know you uh, have assessed rather positively uh, may also show that you do seem to be in regular contact. But uh, let me let me uh, get back to a previous point. Let me uh, get back to what State Secretary Abazo Abazovich uh, indicated when he uh, mentioned the third third dimension. You know, uh, 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 coordination and cooperation between all national stakeholders, uh, and that uh, does include, of course, the business sector, the government at the core, but also it, it includes many others. So we. We're talking about research as an important uh, component, uh, capacity building, uh, 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 so, you know, skill development. But, but also, uh, 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 State Secretary Abazovich mentioned, for instance, this uh, endeavor of uh, establishing a national uh, identif identification document, which may raise uh, data security, you know, uh, civic rights issues also. So civil society actors may also want to be part of this conversation. So. Uh, what, what are the current uh, structures in place uh, in the two countries which would allow for uh, uh, you know, a fully informed uh, societal conversation about these uh, challenges? Uh, you know, uh, uh, what, you know, where do you have these conversations currently? Uh, do they take place and, uh, uh, and uh, are you happy with the way uh, uh, they are, uh, they are uh, currently uh, take place? They do take place. Um, the more systematic approach you have, meaning that is not one by one, meaning one company and, for example, in Serbia with the um, Office of IT or, or with the ministries, right? uh, the quality of the conversation and the outcome is better, meaning um, the platforms okay, 
in, w in which, in a systematic way, you can articulate what is the pain of the private sector as such. Uh -huh. And what the private sector says, this is going to be the problem, this is how we need to address it. Okay. So, um, giving the example. Uh, when we founded um, the e-government alliance with the Nalit, right? Um, the basic document was the strategic of uh, how the Serbia should go towards the um, e-government. Um, the document has been done by the consultants through the Corporate Services Corps. And it basically said, this is what the private sector, business sector needs in order to be able to uh, have a better climate for doing business. Simple as that. Um, it has been recognized immediately because it, it, it was a common voice for the, from the business. It was not a voice from one particular company. And throughout these two years, now we have 50 um, members of the Alliance, the voice is stronger and stronger. One of the recommendations that we had in that strategic document was basically to establish the Office of IT. And we strongly believe that the current Office of IT and e-government uh, e has been done based on our recommendation. Uh, what I also um, would like to point out, the fact that uh, there is a coordination body uh, that exists in Serbia, coordination body of all the ministries and all of the stakeholders, including the academia and um, non-profit non organization, that are basically working as Mr. Abavzvi said, okay? This is a cross-sector discussion on prog program approach, okay? What do we need from a program perspective and how we net it down, crunch it down to action plans? Because this is the only way forward. And this is also one of the recommendations that we did. We, we just, we're just passing how the business is doing it. We, we're not inventing anything, right? This is how the business is doing. So thank you very much. Uh, let me also ask uh, our two state secretaries, you know, what experience they have made uh, with these uh, multi-stakeholder uh, uh, platforms or, or discussions uh, to which both of you have alluded in your previous statements. Uh, you know, uh, what, how would you describe the dynamic uh, of these, uh, you know, multi-stakeholder discussions? Uh, uh, you know, I think in the case of, yeah, please, please uh, uh, State Secretary Matej. I would just like to say that uh, this coordination body, as the Natasha called it, is in fact the Council for Innovative Entrepreneurship and Information Technology, which I have mentioned already and uh, that was uh, had a session yesterday so all the ministries and all the main players uh, in fact from the not just from the institutions of the government but also from the academy from the uh, uh, faculties uh, and of course from some uh, organizational side like uh, NALED. Serbian, uh, Serbian Chamber and yes, NALED. Those yes, two are, are also the, the members of this council. So um, the work of the council for us is uh, something that uh, we see as a crucial for uh, knowing what uh, strategies every one of us who are a part of this uh, council should undertake. So um, I have to say that this council was established in 2016 and uh, many of these uh, results, as uh, Natasha said, uh, I think that came out uh, of this mutual approach, which is of course crucial for uh, uh, this kind of sector, which is intersectoral and present yeah. in every segment, not uh, just of our work, but of our lives. So th this approach really gave uh, good effects uh, in Serbia. And uh, I have also to say something regarding what Natasha said. Uh, she mentioned the word too slow um, and that the government think that it is uh, fast progress. No, we don't think it's fast. No, we don't really think, but uh, have, uh, we don't think that it's fast. And of course, we always may, uh, we know very well what obstacles we uh, have every day in every day uh, implementation of our goals and action plans. So we're not, not satisfied, but having in mind our uh, 
first position when we started the digital transformation, uh, do I have to mention at all uh, the, the beginning of digital transformation in Serbia with the uh, television, uh, telecommunication signal on television ended three years ago. In fact, this all started with this. It was just uh, three or four years ago. It just, it's such a uh, short period of time for any digital transformation. I mean, we, we don't have any illusion that this is uh, fast or whatever. No, but we have to understand uh, that this is a process that is undertaken not just the institution, institutions, also our citizens. And uh, uh, at this point, uh, also the digital skills and the lack of digital skills uh, that uh, Natasha mentioned, we agree completely. This is why uh, the government and the ministries are so much uh, focused on uh, digital transformation of education because this is basic in fact when you think about the future when you think about the lack of these skills you have to concentrate uh, on the system of the education and first of all the, uh, you have to start with the primary schools and uh, uh, what uh, uh, my colleagues also say secretary mentioned regarding the promotion of all the digital uh, the benefits of digital <coughs> transformation and how to uh, promote uh, and uh, natasha mentioned uh, uh, also the, the word of to prepare the citizens for for this i would say that uh, uh, for us the main word is trust how to build trust among citizens in all uh, the benefits that digital transformation will bring in all the services that uh, we are going to provide. So I think that maybe uh, when we uh, go back to s too slow, then we have to understand that we have this lack of trust among the citizens, which we have to work on. It's not easy, which uh, because this means that we have to go uh, uh, deep down uh, in the local communities to work with the local government, uh, and then uh, it's a hard it's a hard work, mining work, but uh, then this takes time. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary. And uh, uh, before I would quickly want to ask, uh, you know, uh, also Secretary uh, Abazovic to comment on the. Uh, uh, multi-stakeholder uh, coordination <coughs> issue and how it, uh, you know, what his experience has been in Montenegro. I would like uh, you, uh, 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 dear, dear colleagues in the audience, to already start thinking about questions because I will, uh, in a few moments, uh, give you an opportunity to ask the panel uh, questions on, on, on any of the aspects of, of the discussion so far. But, but please, Secretary, uh, if you wanted to comment. Yes, uh, I fully agree with my colleagues, and uh, I have to say that uh, one of the reasons why we're changing our law of electronic government is uh, uh, we are not satisfied uh, about uh, coordination, how it is organized and how it is coordinated inside the government, between the state bodies, and how it, uh, and uh, without coordina with coordination with our partners or uh, between the stakeholders. And that's why one the chapter of the debt uh, uh, already prepared the draft of the law, is uh, talk, talking about uh, uh, establish, <coughs> establishing the council for the National Council for the uh, Electronic, uh, for the Development of Electronic Government and Transparency Society and the other uh, things. And uh, also I have to, uh, to add, uh, digital transformation, uh, transformation is not, uh, is not uh, up only if uh, the government uh, start the process of the digital transformation. We need the uh, digital transformation in ICT sector. And I, I'll give you just one example. Uh, it was, uh, your talks uh, give me the slugboard for, for uh, what I want to say now. As example, uh, we can't, if we want to be uh, uh, much more, uh, uh, how can I say, agile and uh, uh, and our change, uh, in if we want to, 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 to speed up our, the process of, of change in the process of the digitalization, we need to reorganize uh, some things. We need, uh, as example, to, uh, on the first place, uh, we need to, to uh, uh, satisfy uh, our citizen. And it is the first uh, goal of the process of digital transformation. Is the citizen uh, satisfied or not? No kind of the technology, no kind of uh, talks about uh, 
architecture, no talk uh, about uh, project. They, are, they don't care about it. They want uh, what they need and they know very well what is the best for them. Because a uh, citizen or uh, user of our uh, services or the customer of electronic services uh, on any way as you wish, you can uh, call them, uh, they know everything today. They have te technology, they have knowledge, they have access to all of the information and you, you can't uh, treat them. You can't offer them some, uh, uh, something what is uh, not in a, uh, aligned with the uh, new, new standards, new levels of, of the development <laughs> technology and all. That's why we need to be uh, prepared to uh, fast changing and uh, in the process of, in the continual process of change. And how can we achieve it? We can achieve it only if we uh, reorganize our, ourselves. I'm sure in uh, state bodies, we can be so uh, fast with uh, condition in which we work. Uh, when we start uh, with one project, that project in that moment is on a technological level which is accept, uh, acceptable for that moment. But when we are starting uh, uh, with implementation, after uh, half months, after one year, one year and half, when we starting uh, uh, with that process in production and put that process in production, we are already late. That's why we need to change something. And my idea, personally, my idea is that uh, we need uh, to give the um, electronic uh, services to the citizen uh, uh, through the ICT sector. Why uh, some company can offer our electronic services to the citizen directly. If it's citizen not uh, satisfied with uh, that service, I'm not satisfied with my partner. That's why I need to buy for, for some services, not for all, okay? I'm not talking about information system which are in the Ministry of Interior, in Ministry of Defense, <laughs> but I'm talking uh, about a lot of the others. Why I need to buy, why I need to buy hardware, why I need to buy software, why I need to buy, why I uh, uh, pushing our ICT sector to be uh, IT trade sector? Why I uh, uh, can't uh, uh, try to change them and to get from them IT services? I want to buy IT service. I don't want to buy any more hardware. I don't want to buy a software, but it is the problem. They don't want that. No, not all of them. Not <laughs> all of them, of course, of course. Okay. I, 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 don't, I don't talk, uh, yeah. uh, I'm talking just yeah. generally. Most of them, of course, they don't, they don't want. It's much easier to buy something and to sell something and take the provision about it. It's, it's more easier yeah. for them. That's why it's not depend on only of us the process of digital transformation. <laughs> if, if we want to be transformed, we need a, uh, to, uh, <laughs> transformation between all of, all of us, all of us. And I already started to talk with our ICT sector. I already went and I uh, will be uh, the next week in our, uh, uh, in our uh, ICT uh, organization with our IT, ICT uh, community to talk about it because I want to push them to try to change, to be prepared for the uh, process which we uh, can't stop. We can't anymore, uh, anymore work on a way like we uh, 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 doing now. It, it is impossible. Why? Because we can't be s s uh, with so fast ch change in the in the state bodies with the, uh, with uh, so uh, uh, huge obligation with uh, with uh, with uh, that condition. That's why we need.
to try to reorganize the set and try to, 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 to make some, some kind of the deal with our uh, IT sector about it. And I'm uh, saying again, why? Because we need uh, to do only one thing, to make our citizen satisfied, nothing else. Everything, everything else is, everything else is uh, unimportant. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary uh, Abazovic, for putting you know the citizen in the centre. Of course, it uh, it has to be our main consideration. Uh, user centricity. Uh, user centricity, but with it implicitly also the importance, I guess, of appropriate coordination and governance structures, so that we're, we can be sure that uh, the, this interest is appropriately uh, captured. Uh, uh, so let me now open it up to the audience, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. Uh, uh, this is now an opportunity. We'll only have one round round of uh, questions to put uh, uh, put questions to to the panelists. I suggest that we collect uh, uh, two or three. Uh, <laughs> if you have a question to ask, please identify yourself and also indicate the affi your affiliation. Please, the the gentleman uh, in the second row. Uh, my name is Nebojša, uh, Embassy of the Republic of Korea in Belgrade. Uh, I would like to ask uh, State Secretary uh, Tatjana Matic. I know that the uh, Serbian government uh, is doing many projects in uh, digitalization, and, uh, but uh, some projects are completed, some projects are ongoing, but I would like to know some future projects in digitalization or e-government. Thank you. Let's collect maybe uh, one or two more. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm Milan Sikulovsky, uh, also for DKF. Uh, I would like to uh, pose a question to the panelists. Uh, uh, you've discussed about the digital future, but how this also relates with the, uh, with the place and role of uh, security services in your, in your cooperation with them in that sense? Uh, uh, Mrs. Matic, you've mentioned the, the, the importance of uh, education, importance of children, so maybe uh, I'm aware that there are some good examples of cooperation on child protection online uh, initiatives in Serbia. There are also some uh, uh, governance structures who, who encourage cooperation between uh, uh, security services and uh, uh, people in charge for the digital development in Montenegro. And also it would be interesting to, to hear how does the business see this, uh, these relationships and the role of the security sector in securing our digital future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe there's uh, one last question. Good morning. Um, Luke Nijman, Embassy of the Netherlands. Thank you all for your uh, uh, valuable insights. Um, you focused a lot on the economic opportunities of the digital transformation, uh, and I guess related to Milan's question also, maybe you could share some insights on the security side of things. Um, how has cooperation been between the private sector and uh, government about uh, sharing information about cyber incidents, uh, maybe international cooperation about uh, cyber security? Be very interested to, uh, to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, my suggestion would be that we put uh, the, the, the second and the third uh, question to the panel first and then uh, maybe come to your question uh, in, a second, in a second stage. Uh, uh, can I, can I uh, uh, ask you, uh, Secretary Matic, uh, first maybe uh, this um, importance to place and role of security services within uh, you know, uh, this whole process, uh, how uh, do you see it? Uh, and also the question of uh, our colleague from the, the Dutch Embassy, uh, uh, you know, is there an international dimension to, to this particular aspect? Of course there is. Of course there is. Uh, I have to say, uh, I have already mentioned that uh, the Republic of Serbia had made some important steps in the field of information security um, regarding the strategic and regulatory field and that in 2016 uh, several months before the adoption of the European NIS uh, directive, the law on information security was, uh, and bylaws uh, were adopted. So, uh, what I want from that moment on, in fact, we have started uh, uh, good cooperation from uh, with some international uh, organization, which have all, uh, also uh, as OSC uh, uh, and uh, DCAF, of course, and uh, their 
have been uh, they have been uh, especially OSC part uh, of our group who have worked on the, our strategy on information security. Uh, of course, we have the good cooperation in this field with the American Embassy also. So we are very open uh, regarding the international organization and this kind of communication. We think that uh, this is very important for Serbia. Uh, uh, we are aware of the fact that uh, uh, we are, of course, we have a lot of to learn from uh, some uh, other experiences, and we are uh, willing uh, to share the, the experience for, uh, with the others. Regarding the private sector, which I think that is also very important, um, there are some small steps in this field. Uh, this is something that we, as the ministry who is in charge for regulation and uh, for uh, frame, uh, legal framework, we encourage this kind of cooperation, but I have to say that we are not uh, quite satisfied how it's going uh, in the uh, in the real life now. Uh, but uh, I would like uh, to mention the Petnica group and the meetings that we w have there. I think that this is a great uh, example of a good cooperation between the private uh, uh, sector, the government, the academic institution, this is the good model. So uh, we will continue as a ministry to encourage uh, this kind of cooperation, but of course uh, there are other ministries which, ministries which are very important, uh, like the Ministry of Interior and of course of Defense, who also should be, and they are of course the part uh, of this uh, cooperation, and we hope that this will get better. Just to quickly uh, follow on, so in, in the areas which colleagues uh, in the audience mentioned specifically, uh, child protection was mentioned or uh, incident uh, fraud management uh, aspects. Uh, so you and you indicated that you know this national strategy uh, on information security, uh, which is in place. To, do, where do you, are there any weak points or challenges or? because I have missed uh, to say that uh, we, we had this strategy, we have adopted it, and uh, we also, the government uh, adopted uh, and uh, one document uh, which uh, um, uh, gave us a chance to uh, build the National Contact Center for uh, uh, children who are the, the victims of uh, internet uh, abuse. Uh, so we have this National Contact Center uh, which is working uh, in, in Serbia with all the institutions, uh, with the Ministry of Interior, with the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Education, and uh, some other institutions that are very important. So uh, we don't have uh, some uh, regional <laughs> cooperation, but maybe something in this field. Uh, now I have a chance yeah. Uh, yeah. To, to speak uh, after uh, this panel with my uh, dear colleague. So uh, we already have some, uh, I think, two ideas uh, for some uh, regional uh, project yeah. together in the field of uh, child security uh, and maybe to spread this national contact center uh, and cooperation uh, with our uh, neighbors uh, from Montenegro, for example, would be a good idea. Mm. Well, thank you very much, uh, Secretary Abasovic. How would you uh, uh, describe the interface between uh, security services and uh, you know uh, the digitalization process or uh, cyber, the notion of cyber security in your country uh, and also internationally, maybe f from the perspective of Montenegro. Yeah, uh, I have to say that we also have our legislative or uh, 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 implemented infrastructure, normative infrastructure, and uh, everything else. But also, I have to add that Montenegro uh, become the member of the uh, NATO, and uh, also <laughs> our standards. Uh, <laughs> are, 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 arise a lot, and uh, we implementing uh, all, all, all different programs through the different ministries: Ministry of Defense, Ministry of Public Administration, Ministry of Interior, etc. So I don't want to take your uh, time, but uh, we're doing a lot about it. Uh, the, the new thing what we uh, done is that we uh, try to reorganize our, our, ourselves in the Ministry of Public Administration, and we uh, already. Uh, uh, change our systematization and we uh, establish one new uh, department for the 
cyber security. In that department will be the CIRT uh, uh, team. I have to say that we start with CERT uh, team a uh, long time ago in uh, 2000, 2009 and in that time we become the, the part of the NISA and etc. But uh, what I want to emphasize and, and say uh, again, what is the most important when we're talking about uh, security? We, we had uh, to talk about uh, 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 are we prepared for, uh, to, to, to being and to work and to live in the world uh, which we're living today? That's why we need education. That's why we need uh, uh, trust, what we talk about. That's why we need to implement some kind of the standard. That's why we need to act, to act as a serious people uh, who recognize and who has awareness about uh, what uh, problem uh, uh, can, uh, 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 which problem surrounding as if we acting in the world like uh, where we're living now. That's, wha that's why I think uh, it is uh, uh, important uh, to organize uh, ourselves to be prepared uh, and everybody else to be prepared for the, uh, uh, for the uh, era uh, of living in the, uh, in, the, in the, living in the digital era. Uh, one thing it's also very important. Uh, we need, for the beginning, we need to implement, uh, I'm talking about state, body, uh, state bodies, we need to implement the, uh, the best world practice about that. It is, uh, it is, I'm talking about standards. I'm talking about uh, 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 security uh, of information. I'm talking about uh, business continuity. I'm talking about uh, operational risk. Because we can't talk about uh, security of information if we, uh, if we don't talking about all of, all of this was what I mentioned. It is, uh, it can be, uh, how can I uh, say, one without other. And that's why we need to try to Im Im implement that uh, kind of the procedure in the uh, every every organization unit inside the government and also and also in the companies and also in uh, all uh, all of others who are acting on that way they becoming uh, uh, aware about the the uh, the uh, problems of the security. And I have to say, we, we also start to, to do uh, on that. And we, next week, we uh, will form one uh, or establish one working team who will be in obligation to implement that standard in the state, ban uh, state bodies in Montenegro. And it is also a never ending story. Mitigating these uh, risk mitigating uh, strategies, but uh, you know, still, uh, you know, security remains an important notion in, in this whole digital agenda, which is also why it's being discussed in the context of the Belgrade yeah. Security Forum. Uh, all sorts of crimes, uh, you know, can play a role in the cyberspace. Uh, uh, some of them are economic, uh, some some of them not economic. Uh, but let's bring in uh, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Sekulic once again uh, into the conversation to see. You know, from your perspective, from the business perspective, uh, uh, you know, is uh, the security aspect, uh, you know, the element of maybe the security services uh, within the whole uh, architecture, is that uh, taken care of sufficiently in, in what you can see uh, happening in the different countries? <coughs> security by design is absolutely the key, right? Whatever you do in, in raising the digital economy, go, going through digital transformation, whatever. But th there, is, there is a point that I want to go back to Mr. Avazovic on um, giving the IT an opportunity to provide services, not to be provider of just platform, right? And uh, 
and I want to share with you uh, uh, one really good example of pub public-private partnership, right, on, on that particular topic in France. And um, the inauguration basically happened at the beginning of uh, this year. Uh, and um, in, in France, in Lille, um, IBM has built a security operating center and basically providing the um, incident and um, response uh, services to the companies within the French society. And, and this has been done, done within a dialogue and in, in inauguration has been done jointly with the Secretary of State, State of Digital Affairs and the National Cybersecurity of France. To the point of how things can be done to overcome the problem of uh, the skills, uh, the, the speed, um, and then uh, IBM also applied for certification that it has to be issued by the National Security, Cybersecurity of, uh, Agency of France. Um, uh, that particular certification um, says that um, that service op uh, security operating center can provide services for uh, key stakeholders, key companies within the French society. Um, so these things are happening. So there are companies that are willing to enter in this area. Uh, on a point of how um, private sector, right, uh, sees and wants to involve a part of Petnica that you uh, mentioned, and it's a really good example that Adele is running, and we are participating in that one, and, and, and trying to find a way how to scale it up or to replicate it to make it massive. Um, I want to point out one um, project that we um, did within the Government Appeal Alliance in Naled, basically, uh, it, and it addresses the problem of information security and uh, data privacy on the local municipality level. It basically is the one that addresses the citizens, right? Uh, and we said, okay, w w so we know that there is lack of skills. We know that we need to support the office in order to systematically approach this issue. And at that time, and I'm talking about the uh, mid of year, uh, it was May when the GDPR regulation was <laughs> on its hype, right? So there were seven companies of IT companies and a consulting company uh, with their own um, um, commercial element, uh, knowledge, um, jointly with the Office of IT and the Office of um, Commissioner for the uh, Data Privacy. We organized that, a project that falls on the category of public-private partnership in raising the capa capacity of the local municipalities and um, a part of the workshops, a part of the um, uh, an analysis of the current IT infrastructure and the organizational um, um, status of all of those local mm -hmm. municipalities, uh, which is being handled to the office of AIT, so they can basically build from that point up the systematic approach, how they're going to tackle that. We did, free of charge, 10 penetration tests for the uh, municipalities uh, that are, are members of the alliance, um, which will also give to the government, meaning the Office of IT, the insight uh, on how, wh wh where are the gaps, what needs to be done, and how we're going to do it, right? Um, and the project that I'm personally very proud of, because it has been done completely uh, with the elements of the seven companies IT and consulting companies that are within, including IBM. Well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, being also the timekeeper, uh, uh, in addition to the moderator, uh, 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 you know, we will have to uh, come to a close soon. But I would uh, like to give the opportunity to Secretary Matic to quickly uh, uh, respond to the question of the Ambassador of Malta on maybe what the the the, the, uh, the two, three, four more most important projects are which you have in your pipeline uh, relating to digitalization. One of the biggest uh, is the Connected Schools project, which uh, uh, means uh, that uh, we will provide the connectivity for uh, all uh, 1,700 uh, schools in Serbia. Uh, this is a, a local network and Wi-Fi and also uh, the equipment for the schools. And this is the project, this is the capital project that uh, should happen in uh, next uh, two uh, or three years, uh, depends on the budgeting. 
uh, the this is the biggest one of uh, then uh, the ministry uh, is focused uh, on the project uh, the pilot projects for uh, broadband infrastructure which also uh, will happen in a period or uh, in next uh, two years and uh, uh, also the other ministries uh, especially the office for IT uh, are focused on building the infrastructure in a national scientific park and the capacity uh, of the park for uh, the innovation and uh, new IT companies which uh, need to be empowered. So uh, these are the main uh, projects for, for us in, in this period. Thank you very much, uh, thank you, and I would like to, to, to take the opportunity to thank uh, all of you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank our three uh, panelists very much for uh, a very lively discussion on securing the digital transformation of the Western Balkans. So I think we have uh, identified a, a number of uh, important variables which we need to keep in mind when, if we want to secure uh, that uh, transformational uh, process, some of them uh, economic, uh, but, uh, but many of them also uh, related to the notion of security, uh, many of them related to the notion of, uh, uh, you know, doing uh, what is in the interest of the citizens, so uh, establishing uh, multi-stakeholder cross-societal coordination and governance structures that, so that we can uh, uh, take on board uh, all the essential uh, 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 voices within, within societies. Uh, uh, and a lot of economic opportunity, of course, uh, uh, related to this whole process. Uh, so I would also like to take the opportunity uh, once again to thank uh, Ambassador Fabrizi to bring in the perspective of the European uh, Commission. And uh, uh, certainly we will uh, continue to watch with a lot of interest how this partnership of which uh, DCAF, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, has also been part in the past and hopefully in the future, how this partnership uh, in realizing the agenda uh, moves forward. So thank you very much and uh, have a very good day.